countdown, we have Sylvester Stallone. According to famous actor Sylvester Stallone, he remembers four of his past lives. Yes, four. Him and his mother are super believers in reincarnation. His mother, Jacqueline, also claims to be a psychic and astrologer. In one of Stallone's past lives, he remembers being a soldier in the French Revolution. In fact, he believes he died after losing his head. According to him, he was reading about that time period. Someone was like, ow, the guillotine, that must hurt. And he replied with, oh no, it doesn't hurt. You don't feel anything, except your head hit the basket. How would he know that? So that's when he knew that he was once a victim of the guillotine. Not only that, but he believes he was actually once a boxer in his past life and was killed by a knockout punch. And he also believes that he was once a Guatemalan monkey. So yeah, pretty crazy. In our next spot, we have the reincarnation of Princess Diana. This one is pretty wild, folks. But in 2013, psychic Sharon Prasad claimed that Princess Diana was back in our world. She had been reincarnated. Want to know who she believes Diana got reincarnated to? Of course you do. She believes Prince George is the reincarnation of Princess Diana. That's right, Prince William and Kate Middleton's child. Now, why does she believe this? Well, for starters, both Prince George and Princess Diana were born in July, making them cancers. Not only that, but Prince William has said that George reminds him a lot of his mother. They both have very similar interests and talents, like their love for dancing. Maybe it's just in their genes, or maybe it's reincarnation, or maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> Moving on to number eight, we have the Tibetan Lama. In 1991, a boy named Sonim Wangdu was born. Two years later, odd things began to happen to him. He would get visions of his past life and knew all about the life of the Tibetan Lama, Deshang Rinpoche. Well, it turns out that this kid was the reincarnation of the Tibetan Lama himself. In fact, he's so powerful that the Lama has been reincarnated a number of times, four times so far. In fact, the third reincarnated Lama, a year before his death, said, and I quote, I will be reborn in Seattle. Well, where was Wang Du born? Seattle. Now, it's believed that one of the reasons you will keep reincarnating is if you have unfinished business left on Earth. I think the Tibetan Lama wants to continue on with his teachings and help others, which is why he is constantly reincarnated. Moving on to number seven, we have deja vu. Have you ever experienced deja vu? You know, the feeling that you've already done something before or that you're reliving a moment? Well, according to a number of researchers, deja vu is a sign you are reincarnated. Maybe you are experiencing it because you actually have done whatever it is that you're doing before in your past life. It can be triggered by smells, sounds, sights, tastes, etc. It could be you are feeling that way because you are reliving a moment from your past life. The term deja vu literally means already seen. Apply that to reincarnation and bam, you have already seen or done it before in your past life. A number of people in history have claimed they learned about their past lives simply through deja vu. For example, let's say you were painting something and then you experienced this deja vu. Well, maybe that's because you were a painter in your past life. If you continue on learning about painting and art, maybe more memories will be triggered and you'll find out more about your past life. In our sixth spot, we have the birthmarks. If you've seen my other videos on reincarnation, then you know that it's believed that our moles or birthmarks tell the story of our past lives. Ian Stevenson, MD, decided to interview hundreds of kids who remembered their past lives. Then from those kids, he documented 200 children that had birthmarks that corresponded to the wounds they experienced in their past life. For example, there was one boy who remembered dying after being being shot in the head. Well, this kid had a birthmark on the front of his head and on the back, presumably where the bullet entered and exited. Then you have a girl who remembered being struck three times with an axe on her back. Well, on her back she had three linear birthmarks. Pretty eerie. Not only that, he realized that 35% of those children had phobias relating to the way that they died. For example, if they remember drowning in their past lives, then they were afraid of water in their current life. It's insane. 
At number 5 we have Shanti Devi. A 4 year old girl in India started to tell her mom that she was a mom before. And she didn't get to spend any time with her baby because she died right after her baby was born. She said she was originally from Mathura and she had her husband there. Her mom didn't believe her but she wanted to see how far this little girl could take this tale. She even had a name for her husband, Kedar Nath. The tale went on for so long that her mother actually looked into it. Turns out there was a man in Mathura who was named Kedar Ma, And he had lost his wife just 10 days after she gave birth to their child. Now she was very intrigued. She set up a meeting between her and her daughter, but she didn't tell her daughter who she was meeting. This way she couldn't fake it. Kedar arrived to meet this young girl and as soon as she saw him, she recognized him. She started to tell him stories of their previous life together and the man broke down in tears. Kids lie a lot, but it seems this one was telling the truth. In our fourth spot, we have Dr. Semke. Dr. Semke in 1984 decided to visit a medium to find out about his past life. After doing so, he discovered that he felt connected to the second president of the United States. John Adams. The medium then encouraged him to learn more about John. And the more he did, the more he remembered his past life as him. In the end, he realized that not only did he and Adams physically look similar, but they also have several of the same personality traits. I wonder who I was in my past life. I just hope it was someone famous as well. In our third spot, we have the fears and phobias. Scientists believe that any fear or phobia that we develop has to do with our past life experiences. But it's not the common fears like fear of heights, snakes, spiders, etc. That's related to a basic desire that we all have to survive. We're talking about the more irrational fears like fear of flying. Maybe in your past life you were involved in an airplane crash or fear of water. Maybe you drowned in your past life. The more uncommon phobias might say something about how you died in your past life. In our second spot we have the unexplainable pain. Some people experience random body pain that impacts their daily life. After undergoing a number of treatments, procedures and examinations, doctors still are like we don't know what's wrong with you. Well the answer might be found in their past life. Some researchers believe that any constant unexplainable pain you feel might be related to your past life. Maybe in your past life you suffered from a bad injury. This transferred on with you in your new life. That's why doctors are like, I don't know what's causing this pain. Well, it's from a past life injury. And in our number one spot today, we have the brothers. Now this one is a heartwarming story, but it starts with a pretty sad one. Several years ago, a boy named Kevin Christensen passed away from cancer. Kevin also had a nodule above his right ear, clouding in his left eye, and he would walk with a limp. And due to the chemotherapy he went through, he had a scar on the right side of his neck. Sadly, Kevin lost his battle to cancer. 12 years later, Patrick Christensen was born. What was odd was that Patrick had a birthmark on his neck, on the right side, just like the scar his brother had. He would also walk with a limp despite nothing being wrong with him or his legs. Not only that, when he was 4 years old he asked his mom about some surgery he remembered. His mom was all like, sweetie you never went through any surgery. But Patrick was adamant that he did have surgery and then he pointed to his ear, the same spot where Kevin was operated on. Patrick then said that he would remember more about this surgery but he was asleep when it happened. Much like how Kevin was put to sleep during the operation. So let's believe that Patrick is the reincarnation of his brother Kevin. At number 10 we have James Leninger. Kids say the darndest things and usually we ignore them because their stories go on for hours and they can really put a damper on a good time. But every now and again they say something shockingly intuitive like when James Leninger was just 2 years old and he was looking at a map of the world. He kept pointing to an island just off the coast of Japan called Iwo Jima. He kept saying the words plane crash. His parents didn't really know what to make of it so they just left it alone. As he got older and was able to communicate better he started having nightmares of a plane crash. A world war 2 plane going down in a ball of flames and crashing into the island off the coast of Japan, the Iwo Jima island that he was pointing to. He told his parents that's where the plane of James Houston Jr. was shot down. His parents did a little digging and found that this was all true. James Leninger had memories of being James Houston Jr. His parents even brought him to meet some World War II veterans to see if his memories were accurate and turns out they all were. This kid was born in the late 90s which was a much better living situation than being a World War II fighter pilot. I mean that seems very stressful. In our ninth spot we have Stevie Nicks. Fleetwood Mac singer Stevie Nicks believes that she was a monk in her past life. In a 1982 interview she said and I quote, I think I spent a lot of time in old churches like a monk. I am very comfortable around that kind of music 
with that kind of creeping around, with being very quiet. Not only that, but she also believes she was beheaded in another one of her past lives. Currently, she has difficulties holding up her head and has a weak neck. She thinks this is because, in her past life, she was beheaded. In another interview, she said, and I quote, See, I think you live on Earth a certain number of times until you finish what it is that you were meant to do here, and then you go on. I don't think I'll be back. I think I am done. So you heard it here. Stevie Nicks thinks that she won't be reincarnated again. She feels satisfied with her life. Coming in at number eight, we have Keith Urban. This one is quite funny, not gonna lie. But Keith Urban believes that he was a court jester in his past life during the Middle Ages in Germany. That's pretty much all I could find on this. It was posted on a reincarnation forum, but I wasn't actually able to find the interview where Keith himself said this. But in a way, it's fascinating. Like he was a performer in his past life and now he's a performer now. Pretty cool if you ask me. In our seventh spot, we have Kate Beckinsale. During an interview on The Late Show with David Letterman to promote the movie Underworld Awakening, Kate said some pretty interesting things. In the interview, she said that for weeks she was having Vietnam flashbacks. Letterman asked, were you ever in Vietnam? And she said, I feel like I was. That's all that was said, but a web cage called the Reincarnation Forum took this literally as if she was having visions of her past life in Vietnam. They went on to point out that the United States military actions in Vietnam lasted until 1973. Kate Beckinsale was born in 1973. So could it be that she is the reincarnation of a Vietnam casualty? Coming in at number six, we have Steven Seagal. In the Buddhist community, Steven Seagal is believed to be the reincarnation of the 17th century translator and teacher, Taran Chungdragdorg. According to Seagal, from the age of seven, he knew some Something was up. In fact, he said he has the power of astral projection. He spent some time in Japan and while there, he learned who he was in his past life. Proclaimed Tibetan spiritual leader Penor Rinpoche said he recognized Stephen as Chungdrag Dorg. In fact, Stephen could identify all of his old possessions. But a lot of people are skeptical. They think that Stephen bribed this man to make such claims. But honestly, who really knows? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the killer. When this next boy learned how to talk properly, he would tell his mom stories on how he was actually a man named Selim Fesley. He claimed that he lived in a nearby village and died one day after being shot in the right ear by his neighbor. In fact, this boy was born with a deformed right ear. He was also able to identify his previous wife and even visited her. And also, he visited his killer and got him to confess to the murder of him. That's crazy. Imagine a little five year old solving his own murder, literally coming back to life to make sure that his killer is caught. Moving on to number four, we have Miley Cyrus. Now this one is a little bit on the weirder side, but Miley Cyrus said that she was Lil' Kim in a past life. Only thing is that Lil' Kim is still alive, and that's not exactly how reincarnation works. But in an interview, Miley told Billboard magazine, and I quote, in my past life, I feel like that was me. I feel like little Kim is who I am on the inside. She just makes me happy. I just love her and I can't help that I love her. Not only that, in one of Miley's older songs, she makes several references to reincarnation. She said, and I quote, I've got a way of knowing when something is right. I feel like I must have known you in another life. Cause I felt this deep connection when you looked in my eyes. Now I can't wait to see you again. The line, I can't wait to see you again, can be interpreted as see you again in another life. Whoever that song was about, Miley feels like she has known them from before, in her past life. In our third spot, we have Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga believes that she is the reincarnation of her aunt, Joanne Germanotta, who passed away at a very young age from lupus. Lady Gaga said that she never met her aunt, but she always felt this deep connection to her. Not only that, but her family all say she looks incredibly similar to her aunt. She believes that her aunt has some unfinished business on Earth, so that's why she was reincarnated as Gaga. She told Daily Star UK, and I quote, I believe that I had a reincarnation and believe that you can be reborn over and over again. I believe I was my father's sister and her spirit is with me. I believe I am her reincarnation. Also, let me know in the comments below, do you believe in reincarnation? Moving on to number two, we have John Lennon. John Lennon remembers being two different famous figures in society. He believes that he was Jesus Christ 
and Napoleon. In 1968, Lenin called a meeting with his bandmates to tell them he believed he is the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. I mean, he was high as a kite at the time, but even when he sobered up, he still felt like Jesus. In the Ballad of John and Yoko, he makes reference to Christ and crucifixion. Not only that, but in Lenin's biography, The Lives of John Lennon, author Albert Goldman said John thought he and Yoko were lovers in their past lives as well saying he was once a pharaoh and her a queen in ancient Egypt. Not only that, but Lenin thought he was Napoleon and Yoko, Josephine, Napoleon's lover. He truly believed that they were together in several different past lives. Like how romantic is that? Seriously, that's so cute. In our number one spot, we have Tina Turner. In 1977, Tina Turner visited a psychic that told her that she once lived in ancient Egypt in her past life. Since then, Turner has convinced herself that she was once the pharaoh Hatshepsut from 15th century BC. Since then, she feels a deep connection to Egypt. She spends her holidays there and everything. In an interview, Tina said, and I quote, That strange feeling of recognition became very strong when I was in Egypt, at excavations, and saw images of Omnihotep, a pharaoh from the 18th dynasty. Something strange happened to me. I knew that I was one of the portrayed figures that I had lived there in that time. That's kind of cool. Like imagine being a pharaoh in your past life and then you're reborn and you're a freaking famous singer. That's amazing. Starting off at number 10 now, we have The General. In 2015, retired fire chief Jeffrey Keane came across evidence which he suggested was proof that he was Civil War General John B. Gordon in a past life. Yeah, not everyone can say that. While visiting a Civil War battlefield, he was inexplicably overcome with emotion and had trouble breathing. At one point, he even thought he was having a heart attack. A while later, he spoke to a psychic. As they talked, he felt compelled to say the words, not yet for no reason. He didn't know why he said those two words. Later on though, he found a Civil War magazine and while flicking through it, the words not yet in quotation marks sort of jumped out at him. It was quoting the words of General Gordon who said them while telling his troops to stay back during a battle on the exact same part of the battlefield where Jeffrey felt like he was having that heart attack. The picture of the general in the magazine also looked a lot like him. It gets weirder though. When Jeffrey turned 30, he went to hospital hospital with an immense pain in his jaw and face. No cause was found. Sure enough, when investigators looked through General Gordon's life, he was shot in the face when he was 30 years old. It could all be a coincidence, but it's pretty strange, don't you think? In our ninth spot today, we have the twins. On the left, we have the founder of the Ferrari company, Enzo Ferrari. Sadly, on August 14th of 1988, he lost his life. The guy on the right is German soccer player or football player, as some people like to call it, Mesut Azil. Look how similar they look. A lot of people think that Ferrari was reincarnated as Ozil. Had their death date and birth date not really correlate, people would have been like, oh, they just look alike. But because one died 1988 and the other was immediately born in 1988 a month later it makes us wonder moving on at number eight we have the reoccurring dreams so you're watching this video and now you're thinking to yourself hmm who was i in my past life why can't i remember it like these people well one sign that you are reincarnated can be found in your dreams in particular if you have the same reoccurring dream it might not be a dream but instead a memory from your past life maybe you remember seeing certain people or a certain place or event chances are you might have been there in your past life and you actually interacted with those people there are a number of stories of people having vivid dreams of places they have never been to but they see the structures there as if they have been there in person. So maybe they have been there, just not in this lifetime. In our seventh spot, we have precognition and retrocognition. Both precognition and retrocognition can be signs that you have had a past life. Precognition is called second or future sight. It makes you know information about future events. Maybe you have visions or you get this gut feeling that something is going to happen or you have a dream that something's going to happen. This could be because you're an old soul. You've had multiple life experiences and now you're in tune with your body and surroundings. Retrocognition is the ability to know information about past events. Not by researching or by asking people, you just know it randomly. Well, that's because your brain is remembering things from the past because maybe you were there witnessing it firsthand. In our sixth spot, we have the fire chief. Retired fire chief Jeffrey Keene was on vacation in Maryland 
when all of a sudden he was overcome by emotions. This happened as they were visiting a Civil War battlefield called Sunken Road. Keen said that he felt like he was suffering from a heart attack after getting so overwhelmed by the area. Later, he was reading a Civil War magazine when he found an article about a Civil War general named General Gordon. Instantly, he felt connected to him. Upon researching more into Gordon's life, he found weird connections between them. Like, he had birthmarks on his body similar to wounds that Gordon suffered in war. The eeriest connection is that when Gordon was 30, he was shot in the face. When Keen was 30, he was admitted to the hospital with a terrible pain in his jaw. Coincidence? I think not. Keen now believes that he is the reincarnation of Gordon. Coming at number five now, we have the murder. Koran Filter Tuzmas was two days away from the birth of her son in 1958 when she had a dream one night. In the dream, she saw a man whose face was covered in blood entering her room. She asked him why he had come and told him to leave as her husband was away. He told her that his name was Salim Fesli and that he had been shot in the ear. When she awoke, Koran Filter remembered hearing about a man just like that in a nearby village who had been accidentally killed. She told her husband about the dream. Her husband said he actually used to know the man. The boy was born and as soon as he began to talk, he insisted that he was the reincarnation of the man in the dream. Except he claimed his death had been no accident and that he had actually been murdered. At the age of four, he went to the village and talked with the man's widow. He recounted their life together and told the woman that he, the reincarnation of her husband, had not been killed in a hunting accident, he had been murdered. The widow and her children visited the boy as he grew up and very much believed that he was the reincarnation of the man they all knew. In our fourth spot, we have the woman who lived 150 years ago. When 32 year old Utara Hudar was a child, she started talking about her past life in a nearby village. As she got older, she was able to speak Bengali fluently, although she never was taught the language. She then started to remember other things, like her past friends and family. Eventually, Eventually, it was discovered that she once had a life in a village 600 miles from her current home, 150 years earlier. Everything that she mentioned, like her friends and past experiences, ended up lining up, so she wasn't faking it. Also, she had a terrible phobia of snakes. Well, it turns out that in her past life, she was bitten by a king cobra on her right toe, hence why she was deathly afraid of them. Which brings us to our next point. Coming in at number three, we have fears and phobias. What is your biggest fear? Let me know in the comments below. Most people People will say that they have a fear of heights or death, I don't know. But what if you have an unusual or irrational fear? Like the fear of flying, fear of choking, the fear of hospitals, I don't know, you get it. Well maybe that's because in your past life you were involved in some terrible accident related to those fears. Or something traumatic happened to you. For example, if you have a fear of flying, maybe in your past life you were involved in a plane crash. If you have a fear of choking, maybe you choked to death on something in your past life so on and so on. So maybe we develop these fears because of a gut instinct. Your body is trying to protect you from whatever it is that hurt you in your past life. Moving on to number two, we have the Civil War veteran. According to this Reddit user, a guy they knew remembered his past life as a soldier during the American Civil War. A friend said that for his entire life, he would have this reoccurring dream. In the dream, he was standing in a field, always at the same exact spot, always the same field. During these dreams, he said that he felt as if he was a young boy and he knew that there was a large group of men behind him. He thought nothing of it until he was on vacation in Gettysburg. That's when he found the place from his dreams. And a strange feeling came flooding in. In his past life, he was a Civil War soldier who fought at the Battle of Gettysburg. And in our number one spot, we have Sonny Ray. And this has to be one of the wildest stories I have ever heard. So when this boy was young, he would always point to his father's Rolex watch and as soon as he could speak, he would say, mine. Then one day, he pointed to himself and told his family his name was Sonny and insisted on being called Sonny. A few months later, he said that his name was Sonny Ray. Things kept getting weirder and weirder. He said that his wife's name was Dawn and that they lived together in Texas. Whenever a country or Western song played on the radio, he somehow knew the lyrics and would sing along. Keep in mind, he was a kid and typically wasn't exposed to this type of music. Then one day, he pointed to a white spaniel and said, that's my dog, Willie. The story goes on and on until the family finally got some answers. When the boy was seven, his parents were running a seminar in Texas. One of the attendees was a woman named Dawn 
Ray. As they were talking, Dawn told them that she was widowed for eight years. Her husband's name was Sonny Ray. So this little boy was the reincarnation of Sonny Ray. Not only that, but immediately when the boy met Dawn, he ran towards her and yelled, Dawn! He didn't even know who she was, you know, they never met before. And Dawn's dog was a white spaniel named Willie. And Sonny had an expensive Rolex watch identical to the one that the boy's father had. And when he was taken to his old house, he picked up his old guitar and started playing it. This boy had no prior lessons, okay? This is just wild. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Ryan. A boy named Ryan was born in 2005, and when he was just four years old, he began waking up, clutching his chest, and screaming about his heart exploding in Hollywood. Okay, not really normal behavior for a four year old, and definitely something to look into. After this, Ryan began to share more details with his parents about a life he says he can remember living. As it turns out, Ryan believes that he is the reincarnation of a famous Hollywood talent agent, Marty Martin, who passed away around. 50 years before Ryan was born. Ryan claimed things like how he had two sisters, one of which was a dancer, and that his mother had curly brown hair, and all of this was true to the life of Martin. He also claimed that he lived on a street that had rock in the name, and Martin lived on a street called Roxbury. Eventually, this all led to Ryan meeting Martin's daughter in real life, and apparently Ryan was extremely standoffish during the meeting, and after, he told his mother that his daughter's energy had changed. A psychiatrist who specifically researches reincarnation has said that meeting people from their past life who have moved on can offer them closure and causes them to forget their former life. This is definitely an interesting thought. I really wonder what happened here for sure. Moving on to number nine, we have Helen Smith. A woman who was born in 1861 by the name of Catherine Mueller ended up changing her name to Helen Smith and she believed she was reincarnated from the French queen Marie Antoinette as well as a reincarnation of an Arabic sheikh and also the wife of a Hindu prince. This is a lot of claims and I honestly didn't know that people would be able to remember multiple past lives. She spent her whole life working as a spiritual medium and she said she could receive messages from unseen creatures. She also said that she could communicate with Martians and knew the language that was spoken on Mars, sometimes even writing this language down. She also drew what she said Mars looked like which included boats and houses and plants and lakes. Considering it is highly, highly unlikely that Mars had any of these things, I think I'm having a hard time believing this one, but I'm sure in the late 1800s and early 1900s, she certainly would have had many people fooled. In our number eight spot today, we have Sonam Wangdu. In 1991, Sonam Wangdu was born in Seattle, and by the time he was two years old, he knew that he was the reincarnation of the Tibetan Lama, Daesheng Rinpoche, the first. What's crazy is that the third reincarnation of Daesheng Rinpoche, who passed away in 1987, said before his passing that he would be reincarnated in Seattle. In 1996, Sonam had already changed his name to Trula, which means reincarnation, and he was leaving his family forever to go and be raised by monks while he studied Tibetan Buddhism in Kathmandu, Nepal. This is where he eventually became the head of a monastery. In 2016, he was asked how long he would stay in Nepal Paul and he just said lots of time. He is still there and still continues to live as the fourth reincarnation of Daesheng Rinpoche. In our number seven spot today, we have John Rothwell. A man who was once named John Rothwell has since changed his name to King Arthur Pendragon because he believes he is the reincarnation of you guessed it, King Arthur. John was once just a regular biker, but in 1986, when he learned about King Arthur, he just felt like their lives were too similar. I'm not exactly sure what similarities their lives could have held, but he was convinced. And apparently being a reincarnation of a king nowadays is very tough work. He says that when he holds his worship sessions at Stonehenge, him and his followers have to pay for parking, which is obviously something he didn't have to deal with in his former life. He even went as far as to take the tickets to court, saying that it was unfair that they were being made to pay to pray and that this infringed on his rights to worship. I mean, I'm not exactly sure the legalities of this exact situation, but the judge did end up ruling the fees as reasonable and legal, so 
that might just be the answer. In our number six spot today, we have Jeffrey Keen. Jeffrey Keen had lived a lot of his life and was already retired when he started to believe in his past life. Jeffrey and his wife went on a vacation to Maryland where they visited a battlefield from the Civil War that was called Sunken Road, and that is when he became overwhelmed with emotion. Apparently, the emotion was so strong that he truly thought he might be having a heart attack. After this emotion passed and he was able to gather himself, he still felt an unbelievable connection to this place. At a later date, he encountered a psychic at a party and had relayed this story to them. The psychic asked if he believed in reincarnation, and Jeffrey felt like he had to reply with the words, not yet. After this day, Jeffrey was reading a Civil War magazine when he came across a Civil War general named General Gordon. General Gordon had fought at Sunken Road, and during this battle, he was known for constantly shouting the words, not yet. This of course caused Jeffrey to do more research into the general, where he found even more connections, such as how on his 30th birthday, Jeffrey had to go to the hospital with a random, really terrible jaw pain, and when General Gordon was 30, he was shot in the jaw. Or how General Gordon had suffered certain injuries and Jeffrey had unexplained marks on his body in the same spots. This could all be coincidence, but it is definitely a very interesting story regardless. Starting off this countdown, we have the story of Aldenaf. When Aldenaf from Lebanon was only six years old, he kept telling his mom that he wanted to be taken back to his old home. He kept saying that he lived in a village 10 miles away from his home. He also insisted that he was not small, that he was big, and said he had many weapons at his old home, including grenades. Fed up about this kid going on and on about this old home, his family decided to take him there. There he met with a woman named Nadia Kadaj, who Aldenaf said was his past wife. As they spoke, Aldenaf knew information about her husband that no one should have known but her and him. He also was able to answer a number of questions correctly, like who built the foundations of their home, the specifics of an accident when she dislocated her shoulder, and an incident with their daughter. Keep in mind that this kid was only six, and you can't just Google this type of private information. In the end, when Aldenaf was invited to his old home, he went straight to the cupboard. That was the cupboard where her deceased husband kept his weapons, like his grenades. So Aldenaf was the reincarnation of this woman's husband. In our number four spot today, we have James Gibson. A man named James Gibson has an extremely troubled past and is actually a killer, which is truly never good, but he also believes that he is the reincarnation of Adolf Hitler. I feel like even if you really felt like this, that might just be one secret I would keep to myself, but I guess James just feels differently. James really did have a difficult childhood and upbringing, which is quite sad. He lost his dad at a young age to the Black Saturday bushfires, and he got into drugs as a teenager. In 2015, he attacked and killed a man named Glenn Sullivan, and when asked why he did it, he said, he killed my dad, I saw it in the smoke. James explained to his psychiatrist about his reincarnation belief and he also explained that the German soldiers were controlling him and had ordered him to kill someone so that they could find him and recognize him so that they could come and retrieve him. All in all, James has obviously had a rough go. The things he's done obviously cannot be excused, but I hope he has received some help and some treatment for everything he's got going on. In our number three spot today, we have James Leninger. James was only four years old when he began to recount events from his past life. He swore that he had been a World War II pilot that had been shot down over Yojima. These memories first came back when James' parents found him one night after he had woken up from a nightmare yelling, airplane crash, plane on fire, little man can't get out. James explained that his name in his past life was also James and that he had flown an aircraft called Natoma. His parents did some research after these claims and found that there was an aircraft carrier during World War II called the Natoma Bay and there was a pilot who had been killed in action in this plane over the Pacific named James Houston. They began to ask him questions about his past life, including questions about the airplane that would have been truly surprising for a small child to have the answers to. Like when his mom referred to an object on the bottom of a toy plane as a bomb, and James responded by correcting her, telling her it was a drop tank. Or when one day they were all watching a documentary on the History Channel, and the narrator of the show referred to a plane as a zero, and James said that was untrue and it was actually a Tony. I have no idea what any of this means, but apparently James was right both times. This is obviously a pretty unbelievable story, and many people think James just took an interest in World War II and planes at a young age.
age and had been exposed to this information previously, but his parents swear that just isn't true. In our number two spot today, we have Lee. When a child named Lee was only two years old, he began talking about his other house with his other mom. This would certainly be quite concerning to any parent, and by the time he was three, he was claiming that his birthday was on June 26th, even though it was not. This continued on, and Lee's claims grew and grew. He began to give more information on what he remembers as his past life, saying that his middle name was Ko, he wrote movies for a living, he had a daughter named Jennifer, and that he had passed away at the age of 48. This is all pretty crazy for a toddler to be explaining, but instead of being frightened, Lee's parents began inquiring more and asking him more questions. They wanted to know which movie he had written as to possibly figure out who their son believed he had been before. His parents began to ask him titles of different movies to see if any rang a bell, and when they asked him about Gone with the Wind, Lee got very excited and said that he had definitely written that one. Lee's parents obviously quickly googled the movie to find out more information, and this is when they found out about the movie's writing. Sydney Co. Howard. Sydney, of course, had the correct middle name. His birthday was June 26th, he did have a daughter named Jennifer, and he did pass away at the age of 48. My initial reaction is that his parents had possibly unknowingly fed him this information, but apparently this Google search was the first time his parents had heard any of this information, aside from hearing it from their child. This is certainly quite a crazy story, and one that may possibly have me convinced. In our number one spot today, we have Barbara Carlin. A woman named Barbara Carlin was born in 1954 in Sweden, and by the time she could talk, she began telling her parents some pretty frightening stories. She said she could remember men kicking down the door of her home and taking her away, which is obviously quite a frightening memory for a child to be having, and one that had certainly never happened in Barbara's life at that point. She also told them a name that means a lot to all of us now, but at the time, her parents had no idea who this person was. That name was Anne Frank. Anne Frank, of course, passed away in a concentration camp in 1945 after hiding in an attic with her family, trying to avoid persecution for being Jewish. Just 10 years after Anne's passing, she wasn't well known like she is today, but when Barbara was 10 years old, her family took her to Amsterdam and she was able to lead them to Anne's home with no directions at all. She was then able to identify a spot on the wall where Anne had hung photos up, and she also told her parents that the steps in the home were different than she had remembered them, which held up with the history of construction that the house had gone through. By the time she was 16, she was already writing books and poetry, and she actually ended up going on to befriend a close relative of Anne's named Buddy Elias. Whether Barbara is a real and true reincarnation of Anne is of course to be proven for sure, but I definitely do like the idea of Anne connecting with people from her life and also having a much better life this time as Barbara. Starting off this countdown, we have Ancient Egypt. Psychiatrist Brian Weiss wasn't a believer of past lives until he met Catherine, a patient of his. Catherine didn't believe in past lives either, but during their sessions, Catherine started remembering hers, so they both tried past life regression. This allowed Catherine to remember one of her past lives in great detail. She remembers living in ancient Egypt and embalming mummies. She said, and I quote, We put the bodies in brine for 30 days. They dry out and the parts are taken out. We are wrapping bodies. The the soul passes on. You take your belongings with you to be prepared for the next and greater life. From then on out, she became fascinated with ancient Egypt. She even went on a museum's guided tour for their Egyptian exhibit and was able to correct the tour guide whenever they were wrong, and also answered any question that anyone had. This made both Brian and Catherine a huge believer of past lives, and Brian started to undergo past life regression as well so he could remember his. In our next spot, we have the reincarnation of Princess Diana. This one is pretty wild, folks. But in 2013, psychic Sharon Prasad claimed that Princess Diana was back in our world, that she had been reincarnated. Want to know who she believes Diana got reincarnated to? Of course you do. She believes Prince George is the reincarnation of Princess Diana. That's right, Prince William and Kate Middleton's child. Now, why does she believe this? Well, for starters, both Prince George and Princess Diana were born in July, making them cancers. Not only that, but Prince William has said that George reminds him a lot of his mother. They both have very similar interests and talents, like their love for dancing. Maybe it's just in their genes, or maybe it's reincarnation, or maybe it's Maybelline. 
Moving on to number eight, we have the Tibetan Lama. In 1991, a boy named Sonim Wangdu was born. Two years later, odd things began to happen to him. He would get visions of his past life and knew all about the life of the Tibetan Lama, Deshang Rinpoche. Well, it turns out that this kid was the reincarnation of the Tibetan Lama himself. In fact, he's so powerful that the Lama has been reincarnated a number of times, four times so far. In fact, the third reincarnated Lama, a year before his death, said, and I quote, I will be reborn in Seattle. Well, where was Wangdu born? Seattle. Seattle. Now, it's believed that one of the reasons you will keep reincarnating is if you have unfinished business left on Earth. I think the Tibetan Lama wants to continue on with his teachings and help others, which is why he is constantly reincarnated. Moving on to number seven, we have deja vu. Have you ever experienced deja vu? You know, the feeling that you've already done something before or that you're reliving a moment? Well, according to a number of researchers, deja vu is a sign you are reincarnated. Maybe you are experiencing it because you actually have done whatever it is that you're doing before in your past life. It can be triggered by smells, sounds, sights, tastes, etc. It could be you are feeling that way because you are reliving a moment from your past life. The term deja vu literally means already seen. Apply that to reincarnation and bam, you have already seen or done it before in your past life. A number of people in history have claimed they learned about their past lives simply through deja vu. For example, let's say you were painting something and then you experienced this deja vu. Well, maybe that's because you were a painter in your past life. If you continue on learning about painting and art, maybe more memories will be triggered and you'll find out more about your past life. In our sixth spot, we have the birthmarks. If you've seen my other videos on reincarnation, then you know that it's believed that our moles or birthmarks tell the story of our past lives. Ian Stevenson, MD, decided to interview hundreds of kids who remembered their past lives. Then from those kids, he documented 200 children that had birthmarks that corresponded to the wounds they experienced in their past life. For example, there was one boy who remembered dying after being shot in the head. Well, this kid had a birthmark on the front of his head and on the back, presumably where the bullet entered and exited. Then you have a girl who remembered being struck three times with an axe on her back. Well, on her back she had three linear birthmarks. Pretty eerie. Not only that, he realized that 35% of those children had phobias relating to the way that they died. For example, if they remember drowning in their past lives, then they were afraid of water in their current life. It's insane. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the killer. When this next boy learned how to talk properly, he would tell his mom stories on how he was actually a man named Selim Fesley. He claimed that he lived in a nearby village and died one day after being shot in the right ear by his neighbor. In fact, this boy was born with a deformed right ear. He was also able to identify his previous wife and even visited her. And also, he visited his killer and got him to confess to the murder of him. That's crazy. Imagine a little five year old solving his own murder, literally coming back to life to make sure that his killer is caught. In our fourth spot, we have Dr. Semke. Dr. Semke in 1984 decided to visit a medium to find out about his past life. After doing so, he discovered that he felt connected to the second president of the United States, John Adams. The medium then encouraged him to learn more about John. And the more he did, the more he remembered his past life as him. In the end, he realized that not only did he and Adams physically look similar, but they also have several of the same personality traits. I wonder who I was in my past life. I just hope it was someone famous as well. In our third spot, we have the fears and phobias. Scientists believe that any fear or phobia that we develop has to do with our past life experiences. But it's not the common fears like fear of heights, snakes, spiders, etc. That's related to a basic desire that we all have to survive. We're talking about the more irrational fears like fear of flying. Maybe in your past life you were involved in an airplane crash or fear of water. Maybe you drowned in your past life. The more uncommon phobias might say something about how you died in your past life. In our second spot, we have the unexplainable pain. Some people experience random body pain that impacts their daily life. After undergoing a number of treatments, procedures, and examinations, doctors still are like, we don't know what's wrong with you. Well, the answer might be found in their past life. Some researchers believe that any constant unexplainable pain you feel might be related to your past life. Maybe in your past life, you suffered from a bad injury. This transferred on with you in your new life. That's why doctors are like, 
I don't know what's causing this pain. Well, it's from a past life injury. And in our number one spot today, we have The Brothers. Now this one is a heartwarming story, but it starts with a pretty sad one. Several years ago, a boy named Kevin Christensen passed away from cancer. Kevin also had a nodule above his right ear, clouding in his left eye, and he would walk with a limp. And due to the chemotherapy he went through, he had a scar on the right side of his neck. Sadly, Kevin lost his battle to cancer. 12 years later, Patrick Christensen was born. What was odd was that Patrick had a birthmark on his neck, on the right side, just like the scar his brother had. He would also walk with a limp, despite nothing being wrong with him or his legs. Not only that, when he was 4 years old, he asked his mom about some surgery he remembered. His mom was all like, sweetie, you never went through any surgery. But Patrick was adamant that he did have surgery and then he pointed to his ear, the same spot where Kevin was operated on. Patrick then said that he would remember more about this surgery, but he was asleep when it happened. Much like how Kevin was put to sleep during the operation. So it's believed that Patrick is the reincarnation of his brother, Kevin. We have the child mum at number 5. It seems that mother Suzanne Robinson was tired one day. Honestly, looking after kids can be super exhausting and I'm saying that and I don't even have them, so imagine if you did and like, I don't know, they're there all the time, they want attention and you just want a nap. So anyway, Suzanne fell asleep, which I think is totally understandable. She was looking after her 3 year old daughter at the time and she woke up to her daughter stroking her hair in a very, very maternal and caring way. When Suzanne came round, her daughter said, don't you remember, I used to be your mother. What are you talking about? No you didn't, you're my child. Ah. Okay, let's take a light break from all this intensity, shall we? All of these stories have been really, really, really intense, but I feel like I need a little splash of breathing space. In our ninth spot today, we have the twins. On the left, we have the founder of the Ferrari company, Enzo Ferrari. Sadly, on August 14th of 1988, he lost his life. The guy on the right is German soccer player, or football player as some people like to call it, Mesut Azil. Look how similar they look. A lot of people think that Ferrari was reincarnated as Ozil. Had their death date and birthday not really correlate, people would have been like, oh, they just look alike. But because one died in 1988 and the other was immediately born in 1988 a month later, it makes us wonder. Moving on at number eight, we have the reoccurring dreams. So you're watching this video and now you're thinking to yourself, Hmm, who was I in my past life? Why can't I remember it like these people? Well, one sign that you are reincarnated can be found in your dreams. In particular, if you have the same reoccurring dream. It might not be a dream, but instead a memory from your past life. Maybe you remember seeing certain people or a certain place or event. Chances are you might have been there in your past life and you actually interacted with those people. There are a number of stories of people having vivid dreams of places they have never been to but they see the structures there as if they have been there in person. So maybe they have been there, just not in this lifetime. In our seventh spot, we have precognition and retrocognition. Both precognition and retrocognition can be signs that you have had a past life. Precognition is called second or future sight. It makes you know information about future events. Maybe you have visions or you get this gut feeling that something is going to happen or you have a dream that something's going to happen. This could be because you're an old soul. You've had multiple life experiences and now you're in tune with your body and surroundings. Retrocognition is the ability to know information about past events. Not by researching or by asking people, you just know it randomly. Well, that's because your brain is remembering things from the past because maybe you were there witnessing it firsthand. In our sixth spot, we have the fire chief. Retired fire chief Jeffrey Keene was on vacation in Maryland when all of a sudden he was overcome by emotions. This happened as they were visiting a Civil War battlefield called Sunken Road. Keen said that he felt like he was suffering from a heart attack after getting so overwhelmed by the area. Later, he was reading a Civil War magazine when he found an article about a Civil War general named General Gordon. Instantly, he felt connected to him. Upon researching more into Gordon's life, he found weird connections between them. Like, he had birthmarks on his body similar to wounds that Gordon suffered in war. The eeriest connection is that when Gordon was 30, he was shot in the face. When Keen was 30, he was admitted to the hospital with a terrible pain in his jaw. Coincidence? 
I think not. Keen now believes that he is the reincarnation of Gordon. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the identical handwriting. Turns out that our handwriting can also be an identifier of our past lives. Let's take a look at the case with a six-year-old boy named Tarajit Singh. He claimed that he was the reincarnation of a boy named Satnam Singh, who lost his life while riding his bike home from school. Turns out, the boys had identical handwriting, to the point where a researcher couldn't tell them apart. That was the moment people believed that the kid was was telling the truth and that he was reincarnated. In our fourth spot, we have the woman who lived 150 years ago. When 32-year-old Utara Hudar was a child, she started talking about her past life in a nearby village. As she got older, she was able to speak Bengali fluently, although she never was taught the language. She then started to remember other things, like her past friends and family. Eventually, it was discovered that she once had a life in a village 600 miles from her current home, 150 years earlier. Everything that she mentioned, like her friends and past experiences, ended up lining up, so she wasn't faking it. Also, she had a terrible phobia of snakes. Well, turns out that in her past life, she was bitten by a king cobra on her right toe, hence why she was deathly afraid of them. Which brings us to our next point. Coming in at number three, we have fears and phobias. What is your biggest fear? Let me know in the comments below. Most people will say that they have a fear of heights or death, I don't know. But what if you have an unusual or irrational fear, like the fear of flying? fear of choking, the fear of hospitals. I don't know, you get it. Well, maybe that's because in your past life, you were involved in some terrible accident related to those fears or something traumatic happened to you. For example, if you have a fear of flying, maybe in your past life, you were involved in a plane crash. If you have a fear of choking, maybe you choked to death on something in your past life so on and so on. So maybe we develop these fears because of a gut instinct. Your body is trying to protect you from whatever it is that hurt you in your past life. Moving on to number two, we have the Civil War veteran. According to this Reddit user, a guy they knew remembered his past life as a soldier during the American Civil War. Friend said that for his entire life, he would have this reoccurring dream. In the dream, he was standing in a field, always at the same exact spot, always the same field. During these dreams, he said that he felt as if he was a young boy and he knew that there was a large group of men behind him. He thought nothing of it until he was on vacation in Gettysburg. That's when he found the place from his dreams. And a strange feeling came flooding in. In his past life, he was a Civil War soldier who fought at the Battle of Gettysburg. And in our number one spot, we have Sonny Ray. And this has to be one of the wildest stories I have ever heard. So when this boy was young, he would always point to his father's Rolex watch and as soon as he could speak, he would say, mine. Then one day, he pointed to himself and told his family his name was Sonny and insisted on being called Sonny. A few months later, he said that his name was Sonny Ray. Things kept getting weirder and weirder. He said that his wife's name was Dawn and that they lived together in Texas. Whenever a country or Western song played on the radio, he somehow knew the lyrics and would sing along. Keep in mind, he was a kid and typically wasn't exposed to this type of music. That one day he pointed to a white spaniel and said, that's my dog, Willie. The story goes on and on until the family finally got some answers. When the boy was seven, then his parents were running a seminar in Texas. One of the attendees was a woman named Dawn Ray. As they were talking, Dawn told them that she was widowed for eight years. Her husband's name was Sonny Ray. So this little boy was the reincarnation of Sonny Ray. Not only that, but immediately when the boy met Dawn, he ran towards her and yelled, Dawn! He didn't even know who she was. You know, they never met before. And Dawn's dog was a white spaniel named Willie. And Sonny had an expensive Rolex watch identical to the one that the boy's father had. And when he was taken to his old house, he picked up his old guitar and started playing it. This boy had no prior lessons, okay? This is just wild. Starting off this countdown, we have the story of Aldenaf. When Aldenaf from Lebanon was only six years old, he kept telling his mom that he wanted to be taken back to his old home. He kept saying that he lived in a village 10 miles away from his home. He also insisted that he was not small, that he was big, and said he had many weapons at his old home, including grenades. Fed up about this kid going on and on about this old home, his family decided to take him there. There, he met with a woman named Nadia Kadaj, who Aldenaf said was his past wife. As they spoke, Aldenaf knew information about her husband that no one should have known but her and him. He also was able to answer a number of questions correctly, like who built the foundations of their home, the specifics of an accident when she dislocated her shoulder, and an incident with their daughter. Keep in mind that this kid was only six, and you can't just Google this type of private information. In the end, when Aldenaf was invited to his old home, he went straight to the cupboard. That was the cupboard where her deceased husband kept his weapons. 
like his grenades. So Aldenaf was the reincarnation of this woman's husband. At number 9 we have Here Lies Austin. I snagged this one off of Reddit. This redditor wrote that when his brother was about 3 years old, he talked about how his name used to be Austin. All His whole family just kind of brushed it off. I mean when I was a kid I wanted to switch my name every 3 days. But one day they were at a park that was very close to a cemetery. His brother took off running and went right into the cemetery and started weaving in and out of the tombstones. This redditor started to chase down his brother with their dad trailing close behind. Then out of nowhere his brother just stopped at a grave. The tombstone read here lies Austin. Maybe this is just a spooky story made up by some redditor or it could be the real deal. Either way how much would it suck getting reincarnated 8 blocks from where you died? Like reincarnate me in Australia or something. I want to travel a little bit. At number 8 we have I used to be famous. I guess the toss up of reincarnation is you could come back as something way less cool. In the early 2000s there was a little boy in Oklahoma named Ryan. Every time he would see something regarding Hollywood on TV he would tell his parents that's where I used to live. When he was just 4 years old he saw a picture of the 1930s actor Marty Martin and claimed that was him. After this point he started talking more and more about Martin. This kid was only 4 years old and knew strange details about an actor's life. Where he lived, what he drove, how big his family was. The kid was able to break down over 50 facts about the movie star. There aren't a lot of explanations as to why this young boy knew so much about the dead star from a forgotten time. At number 7 we have Ishmael Altinklish. It seems if you get murdered one of two things is going to happen. You'll come back as a ghost or you'll get reincarnated. In 1956 a little boy in Turkey claimed to be the reincarnation of a grocery store owner who had recently been murdered. Ishmael Altinklish was just 18 months old when he started talking about his old life as a man named Albite Zolzmus. Zolzmus had been murdered a few months before Ishmael was born. He was struck on the top of his head in the same spot repeatedly and Ishmael had a birthmark in that same spot. His parents were so convinced by this little baby's memories of his past life that they brought him to meet Zulzma's family and they were all shocked by the memories that one of his daughters was completely convinced that this was their father in baby form. We have my new daddy. It's creepy stories like this that make me never want to have kids. An anonymous submission to the Epoch Times was from a mother who told him she got the fright of her life from her little two year old. Her son kept talking about how he loved his new dad. This was super weird because the kid only had one dad his whole life and it was his biological father. At first she thought this was something he must have picked up from TV but after such a long time of the baby talking about this she asked him who his old daddy was. Her little baby told her that her old daddy was a very mean man who stabbed him in the back and killed him. Holy that's a lot for a mother to take in. This obviously freaked her out so she did some research to find out who this person was and the information on that is still pending. We are now at our 5th and halfway mark with Patrick Swayze. When Patrick Swayze was alive, he believed that he and his wife were lovers in a past life. He truly believed that he knew her from before. Then in another interview, he revealed that he used to have reoccurring memories of being a warrior and passing away at battle. Not only that, while he was in the UK for several months, he told an interviewer and I quote, Oh my god, London, I love this city and feel as if I was in a past life an Englishman. So for sure, Patrick was open to the idea of reincarnation and might have been reincarnated multiple times. At number 4 we have Jenny Cockle. The bonus of having a kid who is a reincarnated spirit of someone who lived a long hard life is they would appreciate everything nice that you are doing for them. They would know what it's like to work long hard hours. Well Jenny Cockle was an 8 year old girl living in the north of England. But in her heart she was a 30 year old Irish woman who had 7 kids and worked long hard days on a farm. When you ask kids what they want to be when they grow up it's not usually a struggling farmer. Well, her mom thought this was very strange so she told this story to a journalist. The story about an 8 year old girl who thought she was an old farmer named Mary got picked up by the BBC and then some old dude from Ireland saw the story contacted the mom because he said he knew who this little girl was talking about. It was Mary Sutton. She died at 35 and had 7 kids. The mom set up a meeting with the kids who all got freaked out by this little girl who was telling them detailed pieces of information about their dead mom. But this reincarnated girl was so happy to see that her kids were okay. This is a pretty wild ride. Could you imagine an 8 year old kid being like, I'm so happy to see all my kids. At number 3 we have Cameron McCauley. This kid was born in Scotland but he swore he was from the island of Barra. He wouldn't stop talking about it. He knew who his dad was, he knew who his mom was, he knew the dog that he had and he knew that he died in a car crash. His parents got so convinced that they hired a documentary crew to follow him as they took their kid to Barra. The documentary is shocking. He knew every little detail about this place and you can watch the documentary on YouTube right now. At number 2 we have Ravi Shankar. 
Holy, this one is depressing, but also kind of like uplifting at the same time. I really don't know how to feel about this. So in 1951, there was a little baby in India who was minding his own business. His name was Ashka Kumar. For whatever reason, Ashka was abducted and murdered by two men. His parents were devastated, especially when the men saw no jail time. Four years later, a young boy by the name of Ravi Shankar started telling his parents of his past life. These stories were almost identical to the life of the boy who was murdered, Ashok Kumar. Eventually, this information made its way back to the family who had lost their son. They met with Shankar and they were blown away. Not only did Shankar recognize them as his previous parents, but he knew details about their dead son's life that only they knew. He even had detailed information about the days their son was murdered, and this inspired the father to reopen the investigation against these two men. And for number one, we have My Name Used to Be Pam. A five year old boy named Luke kept telling his mom about a life where he used to be a lady named Pam. Kind of weird, but not a big deal. Until she asked him about who this Pam person was. He told his mom that before he was a lady in Chicago, and he was stuck in a building during a fire. Then he had to jump out of the window. She died after he jumped out, went up and met God, and then came back to Earth as a little baby named Luke. That is one hell of a Friday night. The mom was pretty shocked by the details of this story, so she looked into it. In 1993, there was a fire that destroyed a building in Chicago and took the lives of 19 people. One of them was a woman named Pam Robinson who jumped out of a window in an attempt to save herself. That would make that kid so hard to impress. They know what it's like to be a man and a woman. They've experienced death and they met God. What are you gonna be like? Hey, wanna go play in the park? He's gonna be like, no, I'm just gonna meditate and think about the endless cycle of existence. Coming in at number 10, we have the incense maker. The case of the incense was so intense that it ended up being studied by a psychology professor at the Faculty Society Science at the University of Iceland. The story goes that a girl called Panima Ekanyake from Sri Lanka, who would talk about her previous life from the moment that she could talk basically was adamant that she'd lived before. At four, she saw a temple in a different region of town on the television and claimed to her parents that she'd lived nearby, despite never having been there. The things that she would say got weirder and weirder as she got older. She told her mother that she had another mother and father and that she worked in an incense factory, but she died in a bus accident. I know kids say some weird things, but this does seem pretty specific. Penima had two birthmarks and she said that they were where the bus had run her over in a previous life, causing her injuries. One day her mother was sad about a person dying in a car accident, to which she tried to comfort her, saying that she died in a car accident too, but she'd been brought there. Weird. Eventually her parents became convinced that their daughter had lived a previous life, which was when the psychology professor got involved. In his research, he managed to trace the incense factory that the girl said that she'd worked at, and he discovered that the person she identified with in her previous life was a man. He found the man's brother, the factory owner, who confirmed that his brother did die in a bus accident while bringing incense from market. Now this was two years before the little girl's birth. The professor brought Panima and her family to the town, which they had never been to, but of course the girl recognized. She met the man who may or may not have been her brother in a previous life and immediately recognized him. He was actually really freaked out by her, but she managed to win him around. She knew so much detail about his life and also she knew exactly how to make incense, despite that not being a skill that she'd ever been exposed to. When the brother saw her birthmarks in the exact spot that his brothers had succumbed to his injuries, he became a believer. Next up at number 9 now, we have the Golden Age. Ryan Hammonds was a boy who, at the age of 4, began having nightmares of people and places he didn't recognize. After a few months, he began to describe the details of this. It sounded like he was remembering the Golden Age of Hollywood. Cindy became concerned that there was more to Ryan's nightmares than initially thought. Cindy looked through a book about Hollywood and was amazed when Ryan pointed to a man in a photo and calmly said it was him in a past life. A child psychologist interviewed Ryan and found that he accurately described about 55 details of the man in the photo, an actor and Hollywood agent who had died in 1964. One creepy thing that stood out was that first they thought Ryan had got the age of death wrong for this guy called Marty. He said that he was 61 when he died, the death certificate said 59, but it turns out that the death certificate was actually wrong and Ryan was right the whole time. How could he have known that? 
That's kind of weird. Coming in at number 8 now, we have The Grandfather. This is a story of a boy called Sam who was studied by Dr. Jim B. Tucker of the University of Virginia. Now, when Sam was four years old, his grandmother died. On that day, his father brought out an old photo album. Sam had never seen a picture of his grandfather before. When Sam saw a picture of his grandfather's first car, he pointed to it and said, That's my car. When they showed him a picture of his granddad and some of his friends from when he was a boy, Sam pointed right to his grandfather father and said, there I am. They told him, no, that's your grandfather. He said again, no, that's me. He then began to share a lot of details that were creepily accurate. One that stood out was when he turned to his mother one day and said that in his past life, as his grandfather, someone had turned his sister into a fish. They asked him, who? He said, bad men. His grandfather's sister had actually been murdered and her corpse was dumped in a body of water. Is this proof of his reincarnation or a little bit of a stretch? I'll be interested to hear your opinions on this one. Next up at number 7 now guys, we have The Fire. This this is the story of Luke Ruhlman, a five year old boy who claimed to have lived a past life as Pam Robinson, an African American woman from Chicago who died in a fire at the Paxton Hotel in 1993. It all started when Luke was just two years old. He would talk about a woman called Pam. Eventually, his mother asked him who this Pam woman was. He said he used to be her, but then he died and went to heaven. He saw God, and then eventually, God pushed him back down and he he was a baby and then he was named Luke. More details came later. Luke's mother investigated all of this and found Pam Robinson, one of the 19 people who died in the 1993 hotel fire. Luke said that was him. I encourage you guys to read the full story and see for yourselves if there is anything to Luke's story of reincarnation. Moving on to number 6 now, we have Shanti Devi. When this Indian woman was 4 years old, she told her parents that her real home was in Mathura where her husband lived. Now Mathura was about 90 miles from her home in Delhi. Her parents tried to ignore her story which frustrated Shanti so much that she ran away from home at the age of just 6 years old. She was trying to meet Mathura but was taken back before she could get there. She kept telling details of her past life though, telling people that she used to be married and that she died 10 days after giving birth to her child. Eventually her headmaster at school found a man in Mathura who said this story matched that of his wife who had died. Her name was Ludgate. Devi. He too became convinced that Shanti Devi was the reincarnation of his wife. Shanti never married and continued to tell her story for the rest of her life. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the identical handwriting. Turns out that our handwriting can also be an identifier of our past lives. Let's take a look at the case with a six year old boy named Tarajit Singh. He claimed that he was the reincarnation of a boy named Satnam Singh who lost his life while riding his bike home from school. Turns out the boys had identical handwriting to the point where a researcher couldn't tell them apart. That was the moment people believed that the kid was telling the truth and that he was reincarnated. Moving on to number four now, we have have solving a murder. There wasn't too much to go on with this story, but I'll give it a shot anyway. In 2015, it was reported that a three year old boy from Golan Heights had a long red birthmark on his head. He claimed that he had been murdered in a past life, that the mark was a sign of his murder. Dr. Eli Lask investigated the case. When they went to a city, the boy recalled his original first and last names and the names of his murderer. A local overheard all of this and said that the name of the man who the boy claimed to be had actually gone missing four years earlier. The boy was then able to find his old home. He walked right up to a man nearby and said, I used to be your neighbor. We had a fight and you killed me with an axe. The man turned pale and the boy continued, I even know where you buried my body. The boy led them to the burial site and also found where the axe was hidden. The man then confessed to the murder. Incredibly, the location on the man's skull where the murderer's axe hit was exactly the same place as the boy's birthmark. Next up at number 3 now, we have Anne Frank. Barbro Carlin was born in Sweden in 1954 to Christian parents. Around the age of 3, she told her parents that she was not Barbro, but actually Anne Frank. She stopped acknowledging them as her real parents and told them that her real parents would come and get her soon. As she got older, she told them details of her life.
life as Anne. Around age 7 or 8 she became very confused when her school teacher began talking about Anne Frank in class. She wondered how the teacher could know all these things about her. That's when she found out that Anne Frank was already a very famous person by then who had lived before, a victim of the Holocaust whose diary became one of the most important books in history. When she visited Amsterdam for the first time she walked straight to Anne Frank's house without directions. Inside the house she was stricken with anxiety, she broke out into a cold sweat and grabbed her mother's hand. She told her mother that the movie star pictures were still on the wall. Her mother couldn't see any of these, that's when one of the tour guides told them that they had been taken down for the day to be mounted on glass and put back up. The story goes on and on. There have been countless books written about it if you're still interested to hear more and it really is interesting. Moving on to number 2 now guys, we have the Pollock twins. Mr and Mrs Pollock were a couple who lived in Hexham, England. In 1957, tragedy struck when their daughters Joanna, aged 11 and Jacqueline, aged 5 were killed in a car accident. Their parents were devastated. A year went by and Mrs Pollock became pregnant. To their surprise she gave birth to identical twin girls. They named them Gillian and Jennifer. Although they were identical, they had different birthmarks. Jennifer had a birthmark on her waist that looked just like a birthmark that Jacqueline had. She also had a birthmark on her head that looked like another one of Jacqueline's scars. The family moved when the twins were just 3 months old. Two years later, the girls started asking for toys that belonged to their older sisters, even though they had never seen these toys before. Eventually, the family returned to Hexham. Despite being too young to remember that town, the girls knew all of the landmarks that only their sisters should have known. They were also scared of moving cars and kept telling their parents the car is coming to get them. After the age of 5, these memories began to fade and the girls led normal lives. And finally at number 1 now we have Nazi Al Danaf. In 2000, this boy's story was studied by Dr. Haraldsson, a psychologist from the University of Iceland. At the age of one and a half, he told his mother, I am not small, I am big. I carry two pistols, I carry four hand grenades. I am a fearless, strong person. Don't be scared by the hand grenades, I know how to handle them. I have a lot of weapons, my children are young, and I want to go see them. The guns and grenade talk was pretty shocking as it was, but his parents didn't even know that he knew these words at this age. The boy also showed an unusual interest in cigarettes and whiskey. He asked them if he could go back to his hometown which was 10 miles away. They had never been there. When they arrived he directed them to a house and then jumped out of the car. He ran ahead with his father while his mothers and sisters talked to a local and told them about Nazi's reincarnation story. The man was stunned. The details matched his deceased father's story exactly. When Nazi returned, the man asked him questions about the house, which he all got correct. He got details about the family's history completely right too. He even found weapons on the property that he had stashed in his past life. They showed him a picture of the man who had died and asked Nazi who it was. He said, This is me. I was big, but now I am small. Starting off this countdown, we have Ancient Egypt. Psychiatrist Brian Weiss wasn't a believer of past lives until he met Catherine, a patient of his. Catherine didn't believe in past lives either, but during their sessions, Catherine started remembering hers, so they both tried past life regression. This allowed Catherine to remember one of her past lives in great detail. She remembers living in ancient Egypt and embalming mummies. She said, and I quote, We put the bodies in brine for 30 days. They dry out and the parts are taken out. We are wrapping bodies. The soul passes on. You take your belongings with you to be prepared for the next and greater life. From then on out, she became fascinated with ancient Egypt. She even went on a museum's guided tour for their Egyptian exhibit and was able to correct the tour guide whenever they were wrong and also answered any question that anyone had. This made both Brian and Catherine a huge believer of past lives. And Brian started to undergo past life regression as well so he could remember his. Another story of brothers at number 9. Things are getting even weirder. This is the story of the Christiansen brothers and it is so so strange and somewhat unsettling. So Patrick Christiansen was born in Michigan in March 1991. He was the light end of a dark tunnel for his parents who had lost a child called Patrick aged just 2 12 years prior. Patrick was born like any normal baby but as he started to grow, doctors noticed that things were not quite right. He walked with a slight limp and developed a non 
nodule on his scalp, which he had biopsied. Sadly, it was discovered that he had cancer and he was given chemotherapy. Now, this left him with scars to the right hand and on his neck. Sadly, he died shortly after his second birthday. His parents obviously were devastated. 12 years later, enter his brother Patrick. Now, Patrick had very strange birthmarks in similar spots that his brothers had scars. When he grew a bit, his parents found that he was walking with a limp, but doctors found that there was actually nothing wrong with him. When he was four years old, he told his mother that he wanted to go back to the orange and brown house, a house eerily matching a description of the family's old home that he'd never been to, but his brother had lived in. As he could talk more, he asked his mother if she could remember when he had surgery. She was baffled, she said he'd never had surgery, but then he pointed to a place where his brother had had his biopsy. It certainly seems as if Patrick was living Kevin's memories. We have a very strange story at number 8, we have The Choice. This isn't so much a reincarnation story as it is an incarnation story, a story of a child who remembers actually picking their parents. Sounds strange, right? Keep on listening, because things get very weird. Judy Smith, who is now a pensioner in her 70s, says that she remembers being somewhere above the earth looking down at a gathering of pairs of people. It was then that she heard a voice in her head asking her to pick between the group, asking her to pick her parents. The voice said that they would teach her everything that she needed to know, she just needed to pick. Now she remembers this so vividly to this day, and she told her parents when she was old enough to talk that she had actually chosen them. She doesn't remember too much about the place she was in when she was choosing, only that she was high up. Her story is echoed in that of other children in the press who have claimed that they have chosen their parents in similar situations. Really, really, really weird, but I have to say, if I could choose, I would still pick my mum and dad. Here's a picture of them from the 80s before they had me. Big love! Coming in at number 7, we have The Truck. Dr. Wayne Dyer wrote a book about reincarnation called Memories of Heaven. Make of that what you will, but some of the stories are pretty interesting. In that book, he shared the disturbing story of mother Els Van Poppel. Els had a son who was nearing his second birthday when he said something extremely disturbing as they were about to cross the road. He gripped his mother's hand and said, careful or else I will die again. Hmm. His mother was so shocked by what her son said, but he wasn't done. He continued by saying, Remember when I was little and I fell and my head was on the road and the truck drove over it. Jesus, that really takes the biscuit of creepy things that kids could say. Well, now, Els was absolutely sure that her son had never had a nightmare like this, nor had he actually seen anything like this on television that might have been similar. Dr. Wayne Dyer also shared the next story in his book, We Have the Foreign Mother. Now, this story is about his own daughter. Serena Dyer would often talk in her sleep. At first, her parents thought she was speaking nonsense until they listened harder and realised that actually she was talking another language. One night she woke up shouting in this other language and her mother went to comfort her. In a dazed and confused state, Serena said, you're not my real mother. I have a real mother that I remember, but it's not you. Imagine hearing that, honestly, that's so heartbreaking, and also, what is going on? One more short creepy story from Dr. Wayne's book that I really want to mention because it is so scary. In our number 5 spot today we have Sergey ben Hayon. Sergey ben Hayon is an Australian Australian bankrupt tennis coach who believes he is the reincarnation of famous Italian artist and scientist Leonardo da Vinci. This would be fine, except for Sergei is also the founder of a pretty harmful cult called Universal Medicine, which has been criticized for its extremely unorthodox practices and the fact that he has zero medical qualifications. He not only has some extremely creepy and questionable practices that he says leads to the curing of cancer, but his relationship relationship workshops that cost tens of thousands of dollars have mostly led to divorce. He also involves his daughter Natalie and she claims that she can communicate with a woman's ovaries. A New South Wales Supreme Court jury even found that it was true that he leads a socially dangerous and socially harmful cult. At number 4, I really want to talk about how Nicolas Cage is either reincarnated or is legit a time traveller. Either works. Have a look at Nicolas Cage. Here he is in all of his glory. What a man. What an actor. Well, here is a Civil War man from Tennessee who is also actually Nicolas Cage. Hello there, Southern States Cage. How you doing? The image surfaced after an eBay seller attempted to sell the 1870s portrait on the auction site. Now, in the description, they claimed that Nicolas Cage was a vampire. Of course, logical explanation. David Letterman even asked Cage about it on his show, and he denied it. Okay, maybe he isn't a vampire. But he is the spit of this guy, so I'm saying he was probably reincarnated. Okay, back to the intensity. Coming in at number three, we have the bridge. Back 
in 1994, a woman went on the Oprah Winfrey show to talk about her daughter Leah. It seems when Leah was just two years old, she was in the car seat of her mother's car and the pair were driving over a bridge. As they were driving, she suddenly exclaimed, This is just like where I died! What? Her mother, of course, was extremely shocked, but her daughter explained it all in a matter of fact detail. Have a listen. I said, Well, who was driving the car then? And she said, I was big, I could reach the pedals. She has no clue that you need pedals to drive a car. She's two. She's in the car seat. I legit do not know what I would do if somebody said that to me. It seems her daughter was telling her that she was in an accident where she drove off a bridge and drowned. Her mother pressed her further and she said that she wasn't wearing a seatbelt when she drove off the bridge. Then she said this. I was laying on the rocks. I could feel the rocks on my head. And she said, and see the shiny bridge. And she points up. She's looking up. And she says, see the shiny bridge and the bubbles going up. Honestly? That is terrifying. This is a very interesting story at number two. We have the boy from Barra. Now, Barra is a small island in the Outer Hebrides in Scotland. Cameron Macaulay from Glasgow was absolutely convinced that he'd lived there despite never actually having been. Ever since he was able to talk, he told his family members that his mother on Barra, other mother, must be missing him. At first, his mum was totally weirded out by it, but she didn't think too much of it because, you know, kids and their imaginations. But then he started describing his life in very accurate detail. He said he lived in a white house with three toilets and that he had a black and white dog and his family owned a black car. He said that he had a mother with long brown hair and his dad had died from quote unquote not looking both ways. He also explained the beach of Barra in super great detail. His parents decided in the end that enough was enough. They actually believed him. They were gonna take Cameron to Barra to find the house. They went to Barra and you know what? They did find the house but there was a different family living living there than Cameron remembered. That being said, he knew his way around it and it did indeed have three bathrooms. The beach was also exactly as Cameron had described. Eventually, the family traced a distant relative of a family who had previously lived in the home. Now, that family had a black car and a black and white dog. Creepy. Finally, so creepy, so weird, I don't know what I would do. At number one, we have the Nazi pilot. Imagine your child starts drawing swastikas. Disturbing, right? Well, they probably don't know what it means, but then imagine asking him what they were drawing and then discovering that your child could well be the reincarnation of a Nazi Luftwaffe bomber. Like words, I don't have words for this. Val Eden noticed that her five-year-old son was drawing eagles and then a swastika. When she asked what he was drawing, he replied totally innocently that he was drawing his badges. It seemed that when he was younger, he would also wake up from terrible nightmares in which he said his leg was missing after a plane disaster. Of course, that's super weird and really vivid for a two year old. When he was six, his dad found a picture of a plane cockpit in his son's room, and little Carl was able to pinpoint in exact detail all of the gauges, levers, and pedals, including the one that would drop a bomb. It seems his nightmares came back and got even more vivid as he got older. He could explain his dreams now. He said that the engine of his plane had died, he opened a hatch to try and get out, but his right leg was gone. The boy had a red birthmark on his right leg. Strange. When his parents pressed Carl, he was able to explain his exact uniform. He said he was in the Air Force. And also, he was able to explain the exact model of warplane that he was flying. His obsession with his past life grew, and he would describe to people at school how his former father, Fritz, would teach him about flowers and trees. He also said he was supposed to marry a woman from his village, and he was sad when he died because he couldn't. On a side note, it seemed that actually a few Luftwaffe bomber planes had come down near where the Eden family were living in Middlesbrough. Now this had all happened in England in 1942 and three bodies were found. Fast forward a few years, Carl actually ended up being murdered as a young adult. His story is super super crazy and so worth looking into if you can. If you don't have time in this video to uncover all of the ins and outs of it, it's worth an hour long video just of its own. Like I said, it is so interesting. I will say though, research may have uncovered the lost body of a German pilot that he thought he was. Now this was all happening a few years after Carl's death. It seems that there was a fourth body that was found decades later from another plane that had come down with the others in 1942. The body was identified as Heinrich Richter. Here's a picture of him. Now, here's a picture of Carl as an adult. They bear more than a passing resemblance. I for one, actually, am quite convinced. Mm -hmm.